And welcome to a brand new edition of The Call. It is a Baltimore Ravens podcast where we talk anything and everything Baltimore Ravens football. Thank you all for listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Player.fm, Overcast, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook, and YouTube. Well, here we are. It's episode 301. I hope you guys enjoyed that special episode 300 we brought to you a couple weeks ago where Josh and I got to hang out with John from Jimmy's Famous Seafood. What a treat that was. Got to learn all about the tailgoat. I hope you guys are signing up and going to a couple tailgoats this year. But hey, training camp has officially started. The Ravens are back at the castle. So Josh and I decided we're going to do a little mini episode, kind of talking about the Ravens and some other things going on in the NFL. So, Josh, how's it going, man? How are you? Doing great, man. Um, how do we follow up 300? I hope 301 is going to be just as awesome. I think it'll be just as um, awesome. I don't know. <laughs> there might be less crab cakes, though, unfortunately for us. Less crab cakes. Nah, I'm not good with that. <laughs> Gotta give me the crab cakes. But, nah, I mean, you were together. 301 strong, man. It's been awesome. Another installment, another year is upon us. Bro, it's football season. It is football season. I'm so excited. I'm going to the stadium practice this weekend. I'm so excited to go to that. It's uh, I'm taking my godson like I did yeah. last year. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be great to be back at the bank, and it's going to be great to see these guys in the field once again. It's going to be awesome, man. I, I can't wait to hear all about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is it. I mean, training camp started for all 32 teams in the NFL. This is the last weekend without football until February because next week, Preseason starts for the Ravens. Preseason starts for the NFL. The first unofficial game is the Hall of Fame game next Thursday, and we're recording a week from that, uh, be it that we're the last part of July, man. July is uh, for ending, and uh, August is starting next week. So, uh, yeah, we welcome training camp with open arms. The call is ringing in the new season, Raven style. Dude, I can't wait, man. I've heard some good things out of day one already. Yeah, so we've got a lot going on. The Ravens, uh, the first report from day one is Lamar Jackson. He looks bulked up. We saw that uh, with minicamp just a couple weeks ago, but everyone is commenting on how bulked up and how big Lamar looks now. It seems as if a lot of players are coming back. J.K. Dobbins is chomping at the bit. He wants to get out on the field. He's not there yet, but uh, all signs point in the right direction. We've got Marlon Humphrey, who's looking fantastic. Right now, it seems as if the Ravens, uh, at least for the first couple days of training camp, have a lot of their parts and pieces sort of trickling back in after that injury-riddled season last year. Absolutely. And, and I I certainly echo what uh, you have brought to the table as far as the day one report. I heard Dobbins is on the sideline on the pup list looking in, see so he wants to get out there. Marcus Peters and a few others have joined him on the sidelines on the pup list not to rush them back. Uh, Duvernay had a awesome back shoulder catch from Lamar uh, for the pass. That that was an incredible highlight. Heard Bateman and Humphrey were matching up one on one in in training camp uh, for day one. Um, I think Marlon got the best of them, is what I heard. But um, overall, Bateman's had a strong day. Obviously, Nick Boyle and Mark Andrews, you know, remaining strong with the tight end position. I heard Tyler Bad. He's got some small hands, uh, soft hands out there, not small hands. Yeah, soft hands out there catching some balls out of the backfield. So, you know, overall, I can't wait to see what this rookie class can do. You know, with all the focus is on Tyler Littlebaum and uh, Kyle Hamilton in the first round, uh, making a strong impact. Focus is on the new D coordinator with Odafe Owe and, uh, you know, David Ajabo. Now, Ajabo is the – apparently he's the lone rookie unsigned. Um, there's some squirrels with uh, – the, there's a different indifference with, I think, one of his years with compensation – I think years two or three, um, I'm sure that'll get done. It, apart from the injury, the dude's a monster, dude's beast. Um, you know, we like to see him on the field. I mean, right now, 
it, it's kind of like it's a mute point, right? Because, you know, he's not on the field right now. So the contract isn't holding him out of training camp for some, you know, all practices. I don't know what stage he's in as far as you know, getting back on the field. I know he's a couple months away from returning, uh, but I don't know even if without the contract dispute, if he can even show up on the field. I don't know that part. Um, you have to look into it. If anybody has info, please let me know. Uh, but I've yet to read if he's field ready at this point. But we we would hope things get done on both sides. And and just like a few folks said, and players echoed, if Lamar's not worried about his own contract, why should we? I mean, everybody's been gung ho, especially with the Colin Murray situation a few weeks ago. You know, Lamar's going to probably command and warrant more, given his track record and given his talent ability. You know, in that neighborhood, so it, it remains to be seen. But right now, Lamar's in camp, looking lean, looking mean, ready for the revenge tour as the whole Ravens bunch. And once to show last year that we're all going to come back stronger than ever. Um, I think that's the motto for this year unofficially. It should be just stronger than before, stronger than ever, or, or you know, something like that. Because I feel like, you no, know, I, I feel like it's coming for the Ravens. They want redemption. You know, they were eight and three even with all these injuries last year and just went on that unprecedented losing streak at the end of the year. It was ridiculous. So in 2019, we were rewarded with a 12 game winning streak. Did you know playoff berth one seed didn't really get the job done, but last year was the opposite side with a, a crazy losing streak eight and three, ending up eight and nine. Uh, could have pretty should have won every game pretty much they lost in. Um, you know, so and that gives you hope for the future, even with the injuries. So, you know, reflecting back on last year, the past of the past, building on this year, the hype video got me pumped, ready to run through a wall as usual. If you probably already saw it though, but I, I am ready to rock, ready to get back at it. And, uh, man, I, I just can't wait overall, man. It's it's exciting time. It, it is definitely exciting. One of the things this season that's kind of interesting, kind of got me excited, is that the a lot of teams are doing some alternate or throwback helmets. And uh, Adam Schefter put this out end of July on, on the 25th. And I, I thought this was really interesting. He listed the alternate helmets. We have the Bears, Bengals, Cardinals, Commanders, Cowboys, Eagles, Jets, Panthers, Saints, and Texans doing alternate helmets for a few games. And then there's four teams doing throwback helmets, the Cowboys, the Falcons, the Giants, and the Patriots. Now, unfortunately, we know that the Ravens can't do any throwback stuff because of the dispute over the original logo, which is such a bummer because I would love to see uh, the Ravens kind of rocking those original uh, jerseys and helmets one day. But I'm looking at these alternate helmets. I got to say, if you look at them, uh, we can post these up again, up again on the uh, Facebook page. I really like the Cardinals. I really like the Jets, and I really like the Panthers. It's kind of like the Panthers have this matte black, the Jets have this matte black, and then their logo logos are are one color, and uh, it's, it's a dark green, it's a dark blue. The Cardinals, their helmet looks black, but when you look close, it's kind of this really, really dark maroon red color as well. And I was just thinking... What do you think that the Ravens could potentially do as an alternate helmet? We already know that the Ravens have an, a, a great design. I love what the Ravens are usually wearing out on the field. But if they were going to do an alternate helmet, we haven't seen that before from them. What do you think that the Ravens could potentially do uh, with an alternate helmet? And which one is your favorite of the bunch that have been posted? Yeah, I, I think the Ravens, I, you know, if I use my imagination here, I would like to see a chrome purple like a chrome looking purple with a black matte face mask. Um, still using the Ravens logo, or maybe even using the shield on the helmets this time. Oh, interesting. Like I didn't think instead of that. Of, instead of, instead of the, uh, the Raven bird, I would like to see the shield on both sides. The other thing would be too is, and that would be a cool color combination with some of the Jersey combinations that they have. Like that would look hot with a white Jersey a little bit. What I also, uh, the favorites in the bunch that you posted, I actually, I'm going to go three helmets here. I do like the Jets. I'm going to put them fourth on my list. Top three, I would have to say the Bengals. The all-white helmet is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, the the Cardinals, and then I love the black helmets with the Panthers. So the Cardinals, Panthers, and the Bengals, I love their alternate helmets. I think they're awesome. I mean, all of them are great in their own right. But um, you know, but you know, I really love this top three, and then putting the Jets at fourth on my list. 
Yeah, I, I got to say the Panthers, I think you and I are kind of seeing the same thing. I really dig that. I like the it, – it, I recently got a, a new car, and the big thing I, when I was looking at these new cars is I wanted black on black. I wanted uh, any of the logos or anything like that. I wanted them blacked out. I wanted the car black, and I have a – Jay-Z Raven... says all black everything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's that's what I wanted though. I wanted everything to just be black. I wanted to, like just the the very base trim around the license plate or the thread on the inside. I wanted that to be red, and I got that uh, luckily with the car. But I have a Ravens logo uh, right above the uh, the the name of the the vehicle on the back of the car, and it's it's a silver raven head and it's got that red eye so i was thinking what if the ravens did like a matte black and then the logo of the raven head was black and you just kind of saw that red eye it would be kind of like black on black i thought that'd be a really cool looking design but i really like your idea though of um doing like the shield and maybe like a purple helmet i think that would look really nice because you see the texans they have a red helmet they're going to be wearing with their logo on. and theirs looks a little chrome and and I've seen some of the alternate mini helmets when you do autograph signings. There are some chrome series out there, and they look pretty awesome. So I think the Ravens can get away with, like, a chrome purple, matte black, or maybe even a chrome uh, gold or silver kind of deal and maybe, you know, changing up a bit. I don't know, but obviously purple is the base color, black secondary. Um, like to see something along the lines of that. I mean, the shield, you know, it was taken away up the center of the field and then put back. Uh, but and it was just a fan favorite of ours, and, and it's just an awesome logo to incorporate what Maryland's about: Baltimore Ravens all in one in the shield uh, with the Maryland flag in there. So um, and, the, and the arms. So I, I really think that you know they can get away with something like that. I like to see the Ravens eventually do it. I'm sure if already half the league has done it for this year, I like to see you know the rest of the half of the league come out with alternate helmets and 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 kind of they already have the alternate jerseys. You know now they have the alternate helmets with complete package and it would be fun for the fans another trinket to get of course with you know autograph signings and collectibles and you know again i've seen them out there before if you go on some websites i've seen some of the chrome helmets which made me think of that um and i've seen some wild custom pieces with some um some sports shows i've been to there's been some wild custom pieces there with some face masks and some shields there so i think the nfl can get creative with the helmets and uh think think it would be fun what if here we go what if you know me and my what if you're getting crazy what, what you got what if it was a purple helmet and like the Eagles helmet that's got the wings? What if they got some black raven wings on it? But what if here's another a logo they don't use that much? I love your idea with the shield again, but that that B on the hip. You know, I like the B because my name's Brandon and I can use that as my own logo. But what if they put that B that they usually have on the hip up on the helmet? I think you might like I don't like that. Like, you don't like that one? <laughs> I don't like just to be because to me it would be like, who's that? Like literally, <laughs> if, if, just think about it. like if it was a black helmet with just that uh, gold looking B. I mean, we know what it is, but if you never seen sports before, you'd be like, who's that? It doesn't personify Ravens. Like we ah, get it. Good point. I know it's on the pant, but like I feel like it doesn't. Like like it's almost like and we we get it because we identify and we know what these logos are but it's like the g with the georgia bulldogs and the g for green bay packers like you know what that g is like that it, i mean i'm not saying like they would take away and like you can't well you're gonna put replace the g in green bay with a cheese head like you're just not gonna do that <laughs> uh maybe that maybe that'd be either alternate helmet of, of a chrome green with a yellow cheese head on it um i don't know it'd be something crazy but uh you know, I just think about it that, and I just think that, you know, it doesn't personify Ravens. You know, when you see the Raven logo, you see the shield, you know what they're about. Um, you know, I mean, you have a good idea. I'm not, I don't want to discount it, but I would disagree with it, saying, like, I just didn't like the B, it's too generic. Yeah. Um, but I know you're a fan of the B. It means Baltimore. It means Brandon. It means uh, – but, uh, I, no, I, I definitely wouldn't want to see the B there. But, hey, I think it would look – still think it would look good, uh, but I just don't think it would it would be something that could fly. But, hey. Yeah, we agree, disagree, brother. Yeah. Can't agree well, on everything. Like well, yeah, yeah. It happens. <laughs> it happens. But uh I mean it's just like you and uh blue cheese. I mean, I get it. Oh, I, oh the ranch and blue cheese debate, <laughs> the wings and th- the drums and the flats debate. Now, all oh, right, okay. so do, do you think okay. that the Ravens uh, we haven't really seen them do these alternate helmets before. They're not in this batch. Are they a little gun shy because they went with those mustard looking pants for the 20th season and the, the fans kind of ripped them that apart? That was a mistake. <laughs> I remember they got beat bad that day. I think it was against the Chiefs of the Seahawks. I was at that game. It was ridiculous. 
That was that was a bad one. I mean, everybody again, everybody was. That was hurt. a Jimmy I mean, Clausen game, wasn't it? That was, I think so. I, think it I was remember Jimmy Clausen quarterback or something. It was one of those years. I think it was the year Flacco went down, and then yeah. we had like Matt Schaub at quarterback and like Jimmy Clausen and like Ryan Mallett. I mean, he might have been Ryan Mallett at quarterback. One of the two. I, I remember Kamar Aiken was the only good part of that yes, game. Yes, number eleven. Yeah, I remember eleven. Kamar Aiken. I remember, yep, very yeah. remember that. He was like the sole producer of that game. Yeah, absolutely. That game was so, bad. It was bad yeah. as the pants. <laughs> that really that was that game really was as bad as those pants were. Good golly! But all right, so hopefully, hopefully, maybe next season the Ravens will do something uh, for an alternate. I, I love the the color rush jerseys that the the Ravens still pull out every once in a while. So I don't know. I, I'm one of those people. You know, if you listen to my hockey podcast, what the puck, Coach Dan, he. Uh, he hates alternate stuff. He likes stuff to be traditional. He likes stuff to, to always like stay as they were. Whereas I'm like, Oh, this is weird looking. I like it. I dig it. So I saw these alternate helmets and I was like, I kind of want to talk to Josh about this because I want to, I, I want to see what the Ravens would do. I'm kind of intrigued, something different, something new. We ha- we've had these logos for the Ravens for a really long time. Maybe we could come up with something a little bit different. Maybe we could come up with something kind of fun and, and, and out there, but We'll see. Maybe next year. But right now, this year, the Ravens are starting training camp. The season is right upon us. I can't wait. Uh, Josh, this is a little mini episode. Have we covered everything for this episode of The Call? Quote the Raven, never murmur. We got to cover. All right, guys. Well, if you want to continue the conversation with Josh or I, if you guys are, you know, graphic artists out there, out there, you want to design your own helmet and show them off and let us see it, let them, let us see them. Tweet to us. You can tweet to me at Brando Cash. Josh, where can people tweet to you at? Always at Italian GQ fifty two. Now go over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the call podcast. Like us over there. Whenever our new show comes out, you'll be the first to know. Plus we're always sharing all kinds of stuff over there as well. Josh and I, we're, we got some stuff cooking for this season and we're really uh, uh, excited about it. So hopefully uh, we'll have some exciting stuff for you guys to check out all season long. So make sure you go over and like us over on Facebook. Now we do this show for free. You listen, stream and download for free on Apple podcast, Stitcher, tune in player fm overcast google podcast spotify facebook and youtube all we ask in return is for you to please spread the word about the show write us an apple podcast review and then let people know on facebook and twitter and tumblr and pinterest and instagram and reddit and snapchat and twitch and tiktok anywhere you're social on the web or with your phone say i'm a baltimore ravens fan i listen to the call and you should too so if you're a local here in baltimore the stadium practice is coming up this saturday if you see me walking around come say hi we'll do a selfie but that's it for the show this week josh take us out the way you always do appreciate it brandon football is back but i will say this i think the b alternate home is growing on me already yeah because it stands for blue cheese and Britt baker all right all right Britt baker i'm I'm all for blue cheese though no no it does not stand for that it only stands for good things (laughs) i just thought i'd get you at that one so okay gotcha gotcha (laughs) but uh, i tell you i tell you what b stands for Florida Ravens are back, baby. And I can't yeah. wait to see what they got in store for us. Say, preseason game number one is on the horizon next weekend. Get ready for it. It's going to be fantastic. And uh, football's here. Let's cross our fingers. Let's say some prayers. Nobody get hurt this year in preseason. No one's playing in the preseason. No one gets hurt in training camp preseason. Hey, we don't get, don't get hurt at all this season. But if it happens – let, let's do it for the games that matter because we know injuries are part of the game. And unfortunately they are sometimes unavoidable um, and, and sometimes excruciating to go through as both uh, player fan family and everything else. But uh, no, it's so for season health, healthy season for the Ravens revenge tour. Can't wait to get it started. 2022 Raven season is upon us. NFL is upon us. I know everybody's geared up, ready to go, getting their fancy dress ready, getting, uh, getting geared up and ready for the road trips for the season. And, uh, and uh, just, again, training camp's here. Enjoy it. I hope you go out to the facility. Enjoy it with your uh, family and friends if you get a chance to go. Like Brandon, if you're at the stadium practice, can't wait to hear all about it. Uh, please post us uh, on the call Facebook page and tweet us about it. I would love to see pictures and video and, and, and share your experiences. If it's your first time in the stadium, if it's your 100th time in the stadium, you know, I want to hear about it, and we want to hear about it, me and Brandon. So with that being said, enjoy the last bit of all season. 
Because actually, wait a minute. There's no offseason. Football's here. Baltimore Ravens. How about it? Let's fly high. This has been a production of Brando Cash Entertainment. Music by Brad Lepore and Daniel Kelly from the DBK Studio. For more information, go to brandocash.com.